like general idea. So I'm not a, a kind of computer scientist and I'm not a type theorist. Uh, by education, I'm an algebraist and I started with category theory like a while ago while I w uh, when I was a student. So, and then I was, I spent most of my life, or maybe all of my life, uh, writing code and eventually like gradu uh, gradually getting uh, into understanding that, hmm, this stuff is categorical. So more and more, uh, and eventually I learned some topos theory. So that's what this talk is based on. But I'm not going to introduce any topos theory at all. No, like, no geometric uh, morphisms, no adjoin adjoint functors, and even no monads. Well, okay, just one monad. It's called maybe, so no big deal. Everybody knows it. And by the way, uh, since maybe it's not, one hmm? so maybe one more. Yeah, it will it will show up. Yeah, as a like an as an extra. Uh, also, since I'm not a computer scientist, the type theory that I'm showing is not the traditional uh, kind of type theory where you sh see those like sequence, uh, those uh, how they call it turnpike symbols. No, I don't have them. <laughs> well, I mean. Uh, I kind of teach the, uh, some kind of similar stuff, but it's, it's not my area. So it will be all geometrical. And by the way, you probably heard several times today, I heard today, uh, that a type is a set. Uh, well, this type theory is not based on sets. It's not based on uh, even on Boolean logic. So some logic is Boolean, some not. So I'll show you examples. OK, for those of you that just came, this is the book that you're not supposed to have read. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, again, wrong direction. So I'll start with an example where uh, Boolean logic doesn't work. Imagine we have a theory that describes something like your, whatever, your program, your computer science, and we have some kind of like development of the theory. We have theory zero, zero that we had before, and then it turns into theory one that we have after. So we have like types from day zero, and then we have types from day one. And we have a function from types of, uh, that we had yesterday to types that we have today, right? How about the sums? Well, we have these functions. If we have these functions, we can like, have functions defined on sums of types, on products, on these things, maybe. Suppose like u is a subtype of t, so which means like yesterday we had u as a subtype of uh, t, and today we have u as a uh, subtype of t1. Now, if we look at what's, happened to the, what's happening today, x1 could be uh, uh, of type t1, but it may, uh, and it may, be, uh, like of, uh, may belong to type u1, or may not, but the, its prototype there may be a prototype in T0 that uh, becomes X1 today. And that prototype could have been in U0, but maybe not. So we have two choices for X1, X1 and we have actually three choices for X0. So the logic is ternary. The logic is binary, regular Boolean logic today. Uh, the X0 is either uh, U0 or not. But yesterday it could have been, uh, no, no, today is u1 or not, but yesterday it could have been u0. It could have been uh, not u0, but to, uh, today it becomes u1. And here the, uh, I don't see that example, but an example, uh, an example could be, remember Java, old Java, Java map. Uh, no, Java hash table, right? It wasn't implementing map like many, many years ago. And then suddenly it started, it started implementing map. So that's how it is. Uh, things change and types like something that wasn't uh, our type, they suddenly become our type. So uh, here's the picture. Like the things that are in U0, the things that are in T0. And then with time, they move uh, into this. So 
in this case, like u0 was always in u, u was always in u. This thing x was not in u, but then it becomes at, uh, an instance of u. And t is never an instance of u. So we have three options here, two options here. We had something before, and then we have something after. So this is the logic that uh, can describe this kind of behavior. Now we have like uh, false and true. And before we had false, true, and something that something in the middle that becomes true, but not not always. So uh, this is a, like an inspiring inspiring example on, of why uh, we should consider uh, cases that are not Boolean at all. But I was talking about theory, right? Uh, what is a theory? We had uh, in a theory uh, like as described in model theory. We have terms which could be variables or whatever, like, or built out of functional symbols or something else. We have operations that may be relations, and we have axioms. Axioms describing the interrelationship uh, between terms or between uh, elements, between values. And those axioms can have these two quantifiers, universal and existential. A geometric th a theory is geometric if it has existential quantifier. So I'm not going into model theory. I'm just uh, reminding you or just telling you what a theory is. Oh, I don't need this computer. So like before, we had this theory, meaning that we have types. And basically, it constitutes some theory. So maybe your code is a theory. A programming language is a theory. So what we have in this type theory, we have types, just names of things, just types. And we have functions between types. Node functions are not types. Uh, so types are like describing, maybe you can say sets, but with, we're not dealing with sets. Types are describing like some uh, collections or like uh, w uh, some ways of classifying uh, objects into those collections. And functions map, well, I wouldn't say map, they just like are between different types. So a function is from type 1 to type 2. And these are not, uh, functions are not types. So there is no uh, function type yet. I'll introduce it later. So think of them as something that is like somewhere in hardware, like, uh, or in the library. Like you have Java, so you have those things that are implemented in JVM or in your like floating point uh, machine, so it can multiply, uh, it can uh, like calculate sine, cosine, and, and logarithm. So functions in this specific type theory have equality, which means no, they're not functions that we know from uh, sets, uh, because like in our old uh, traditional type theory, we cannot compare functions with too much uh, to request, because like we have to compare all the values. Not in this case. Functions are given to us. So uh, what we know about functions here? So they have equality. We can say that two functions are equal. Functions can compose. So we have a function from A to B, and we have a function from B to C. There is a function that uh, is a composition of these two from A to C. For each object, for each type, I mean, I, I'll be mixing objects and types, because in category theory, they are objects. Uh, they're called objects. So identity is given for each type, for each object. And identity, meaning that identity composed with any function, uh, keep that function, left composition or right composition. Yeah, we have a, categ a category. So we have a category, and let's see what else do we need. I define a subtype. A subtype in this specific type theory is any Monomorphism. And what's a monomorphism? If we have, like, a given, uh, so we have two types, A and B. H is a subtype, which means it's an inclusion of A to B. And on which, on which occasion can it be an inclusion or subtype? If we have two functions, F and G, from some C to A. And if F followed by H is equal to g followed by h, then f is equal to g. So it doesn't glue uh, distinct uh, functions. 
no, so that's why, uh, like, uh, in set theory, yeah, it's a regular injection, right? Or, uh, and any notion of monomorphism uh, amounts to this definition. So I'll be denoting them like this, so that the standard notion for monomorphism. But the rather subtype. And again, it's like it's interesting. So how come, uh, like, say, take real numbers and take uh, integers, right? So we can inject uh, integers into real numbers in many uh, different ways, right? So we have many different subtypes. One subtype is odds. The other subtype is evens. The other is just all integers. So it depends on how we in, uh, inject them. So this is the definition of subtype, and I'll be using it. And of course, it's a little bit like uh, it's a little bit different from uh, you have in sets. So now we uh, throw in one more specific type, a unique type called unit. It's also called to uh, top. It's also denoted as one. And what is, uh, what's so special about it? Why it is called terminal? There is exactly one function from any other type to, uh, to this t. So you encounter units like in almost every language. Uh, so there's nothing new here, right? But now take a, take a look at these functions from unit to A. These functions are called points in categories. Or uh, they're also called instances of type A. So T is a type. And since there is just one function from T to T, because one function from any A, T has just one instance. In Scala, it's denoted as parentheses. But I'm not talking about Scala, so it's just an illustration. So, see, having this specific terminal type, having unit, we can define uh, instances. And an instance is also, see, it's a function, right? So an instance is a type. Now, how, how do we do, how we, uh, having functions, how do we apply functions to instances? It's a composition. We have x, and x is an instance uh, which an instance of type A, meaning it's a function from unit to A, right? So compose this x with any function f, this composition, right? So you have f of x. So this composition is an instance. And what is it? Because x is from uh, unit to A, and f is from A to B. So the composition is from unit to B, which is exactly exactly an instance of B, a point in B. So this thing uh, allows us to uh, talk about f uh, functions as something that maps units, maps points, maps instances to other instances. The thing is, generally speaking, in uh, like if we throw out set theory, that's not, uh, the, that's not how a function can be defined. So, Two functions can be the same, can be equal as mappings from uh, instances on one uh, type to another, but not, that's not enough. They still can be different. I'm not going to give an example of it, but that's kind of kind of obvious because not, not functions are not defined by their compositions with uh, units. There may be something more. Okay, so we had unit. That is terminal, uh, terminal type. Now, product type. It's, uh, it's known as pair type, right? Like A, B. And you know, it's, it's like traditionally written uh, like this in Scala, for instance. So it's called product type. And in this theory, it's defined like this through universal property. So given two types, this type always exists. Uh, it has two functions, two projection functions. So the first one, of course, maps an a, uh, a, B to A, and the other one maps A, B to B. So two projection functions and every two functions, uh, like from an arbitrary C to A, one to A and another to B, are in one-to-one -one correspondence with functions from C to this product. 
So I can draw a picture like this. A here, B here. So having these two things, this is given to us. If we have it like F here, G here, so we can say F, G. And of course, if we have this function, so we can compose it with projections, and we have this. So this composition, so they're in one-to-one -one correspondence, meaning that given this, composed with projection, you have this function. Composed with projection, you have this function. So they're in one-to-one -one correspondence. And if, for instance, you have C as unit, you have a point, right? You have an instance of uh, A cross B. So that instance is exactly a pair. So that's all about product types. No, not all. Yeah, yeah, so that's all about product types. An instance of A cross B is a pair. Uh, and it's equivalent to having a pair of instances. Also, yes, keep monoid. Now, one interesting case of such a product. Let's have a product of A with itself. And we have identity function from A to A here, from A to A here. It gives us a function from A to uh, its product with itself, right? This function is called diagonal. And of course, if you look into what it gives for elements, it gives a pair A with itself. This picture. I'll be using it like regularly. It means this is, a, is in one-to-one -one correspondence with this. So having a pair of ident identities, we have a diagonal. Given a diagonal, we have these two identities. Well, because diagonal followed by, by projection is an identity, right? And also we can see, we can check, I'm not doing it, that this will be a monomorphism always, which makes uh, A as a, a subtype of uh, this pair, of its uh, square, which also means that, uh, say, if you are familiar with linear logic, where this diagonal doesn't, uh, doesn't have to exist. So it's, the logic is not linear. In linear logic, uh, like if you have like uh, one uh, dollar and do this diagonal, we would have a pair of dollars. No. So this doesn't, this doesn't work in, uh, linear log uh, uh, in linear logic, but here we can have it, meaning probably diagonal is not good for dollars. <laughs> so that's not enough. We're introducing the exponential type. Now we use product on the left side of a function. So given a function, like from A cross B to C, meaning like if you uh, think in defining functions in instances, so we have an instance of, B of A, an instance of B, and produce something uh, in C. So having a function from A cross B is the same as having, as having a function into this type, which is called C to the power of B. It's called exponential type. Or uh, you can see it, it's like, it's like a type of functions from B to C. So the, the, uh, the operation is carrying, right? So we have it the same as like having a special case. There's a special case when 
the left component of product is unit. By properties of unit, there is just one uh, projection to unit. So T cross B, unit cross B, it's more or less the same as B. So any function fr uh, from B to anything is equivalent to having a function from this to this. Same thing. I mean, uh, isomor uh, strictly speaking, it's isomorphic, but for types, uh, we don't care. Isomorphism uh, is the case. So having a function from B to C gives us a, an instance of this uh, exponential type, a point, an instance in uh, C to the power of B, which means f all functions are in one-to-one -one correspondence with points in C to the power of B. But there may be more than uh, just points in objects. So we can talk about po so functions uh, being uh, like provided with uh, exponential types for every pair gives us the opportunity to have to map all uh, every function into a point. But points not all, uh, is not all that an object can have. So now. Just having these like simple things, we can build a lot of stuff that is like uh, becoming kind of a part of computer science. So take this identity function from b to the power of a to b to the power of a, right? As we saw before, the things are one to in one-to-one -one correspondence, right? So let's do this, flip it over, and we'll have a function from a cross b to the, uh, to the power of a to b. Which means what? Uh, like in uh, elements, element-wise, take an instance of A and the function from A to B, which uh, we already uh, said is an instance of uh, B to the power of A. Given these two, evaluation uh, gives us the application of a function he from here to the element to the instance of A. So it's also known as flip ID in Haskell. It's not known in Scala, probably, but anyway. So that's what it is. Or in Scala, it can be rewritten like this. If we take identity. Is it there, here? No. Yeah, it's more than that. Anyway, but it's, mm, it's produced us, using, oh, yeah, it's identity, yeah. On b to the power of a, yeah, on this type. And, and carry, and we have evaluation. So eval function. So that's pretty simple, right? We build uh, this something from like from out of nothing. Application of function. That's not enough because we need logic. And logic here would, uh, will be a little bit weird. So we reserve one special instance. No, no, we reserve this logical type. Type of logical values. In set theory, it's true and false. Just a set consisting of true and false. Generally speaking, it can have more. It, can, it doesn't have to consist of just points or of just instances. So we introduce this type is traditionally denoted as omega. And there is a special instance called true. Uh, instance meaning uh, like a point. Uh, so it's a mapping from a unit to this omega, right? Uh, in, so, OK, given this logical type and a special instance true, and every function from any type A to omega is called predicate. Well, because this is a type of logical values. So, and we introduce this axiom. Fun predicates, functions from A to omega, are in one-to-one -one correspondence with subtypes of A. In set theory, it's denoted like this. A1, this subtype, is the set of all elements of A such that, such that this predicate is true. So it's how they call it, like comprehension axiom, separation axiom, whatever. So in uh, generally speaking, in category theory, it's denoted as pullback. A1 is the biggest, the closest uh, type that uh, uh, we're going this way 
included, uh, inject it into A and then apply predicate is the same as like going through uh, unit. The mapping to unit is unique, so we ignore it. And then we get true. So it consists exactly of all those things in A that are true when uh, the predicate is applied. So we have this one-to-one -one correspondence between subtypes and predicates, which makes it pretty powerful and which makes uh, set theory pretty powerful because we can logically describe things and you can define subobjects by like logical <coughs> expressions, uh, subtypes, uh, subsets, except that, hmm, what expressions? Do we see any expressions here? Not yet, right? We don't even see false, we only have true. So in next slides, uh, I'll be working on introducing like these things, logical connectives. But first, uh, let's start with power type. So we have this omega, and we already have these exponential types. So let's do it omega to the power of a. So what is the point? Uh, what is the instance of omega to the power of a? It's the same as the function from a to omega, right? Well, because it's like for that mapping. And what's uh, functions from a to omega? That, uh, that is predicates, right? They are in one-to-one -one correspondence with subtypes of a. So which means having uh, an instance of omega to the power of a is the same as having a subtype. So for a type A, we have a type of all these subtypes, which is pretty like powerful requirement, right? So we don't have this, uh, say, in SQL or like in any probably other uh, programming language. We, ca we can also express it like this. We have a predicate from A to omega, and A classified by this predicate is like this. So an instance of omega uh, to the power of A represents a subtype, but we are not saying all these, uh, all these things are given right away. Let's go back to diagonal. So if we have a diagonal, remember I said the diagonal makes A a subtype of its own square. And it maps an instance of A to a pair A, A. So what does it what predicate would classify it? The stuff that, uh, the predicate would say that, uh, yeah, Wait, let's, let me write it. If you have A maps to A, A, the predicate would map A, A prime to A equals a prime. Well, see why? Only things where uh, left and right part are the same are map to true. So this thing uh, is equivalent to this. So by having diagonal, we uh, introduce this predicate that classifies this diagonal, and this predicate is equal. So equality, equality is, uh, for, uh, is given us by the other uh, axioms. Just because we have uh, diagonal and because we have uh, predicate for every subtype. So now let's do tricks. Like given uh, an equality, right? So it's from A cross A to omega, <coughs> the predicate. Flip A over there and we get what? Singleton. How come? We have this predicate, right? So it gives us A maps to the set of such A primes that A prime equals A, which is a singleton, right? Which is a set uh, if, we, if we are talking about sets. It consists of just A. So we have this singleton function. Oh, this we already saw, right? So given an identity, we have this flip ID uh, evaluation. But in this specific case, why is it denoted like this? 
see what the trick is. Given an A and some like subtype A prime, it's map it's mapped to A belongs to A prime. Why is it? Because, well, if we go, if we go back, we'll see that uh, the set is mapped to itself, right? So here, only elements of that set are mapped to true. So singleton is the is a, a equality carried and equality. Remember, equality was also carried, right? No. No, equality is a cl classifier for diagonal. Okay. So we can uh, define more things, like uh, given two functions from uh, from type A to type B. We can define an, equ an equalizer of these two functions is the closest to A. The set of all, uh, if I'm talking uh, in the terms of sets, but this, uh, the word set is like kind of artificial. It, it's a part of the language, but we're not talking about sets in, as in set theory. So the set of all these such A's on which F of A is equal to G on A. And it's defined by this universal property, but let's keep that. And in SQL, it's, it's uh, expressed like in this way. So given a type A, okay, or like if tables are types, right? Given fields F and, uh, and G, suppose uh, they return like the same type, some B. We select all those things from A where A dot F equals to A dot B. That's a typical thing, right? Now, how about having two types, two tables, uh, s select something from A and B? That's called, <coughs> uh, that's called pullback type. So if we have A and B, and we select from A and B all such things that, uh, where F on A equals to G on B, we have this thing. It's called pullback. That's the closest uh, collection of pairs A, B, such that F on A equals to G on B. So this is a type again. So we can introduce this type. So we have like tons of types, uh, like in set theory, basically. So empty type, at last. I'm trying to introduce some logic and some uh, false. We can build empty type, which is uh, uh, known uh, like in programming languages as nothing, or bottom type. It will be a unique, it has a unique uh, inclusion, uh, injection into any other type. And we can build it using these tricks. So basically, it's like all those truth values that are not changed by any other function. So, because if you have like more than one truth value, so there is a, flip, a swap. So, is there such a value? No, which means it doesn't have any uh, any element. So there is mm, it's empty, meaning that the, there's no instance of it. So this is a bottom type, and it can be like informally described like this: the set of all such x's from omega uh, that. And if uh, the, the, uh, they're fixed points for any function. And, okay, it gives us an empty type. Now, if we have an empty type, now we can build false. False is such an instance, uh, such an instance of omega that it classifies empty subtype of unit. So it classifies nothing. So what's the feature of false, right? So we can rewrite it like this. Bottom is a set of such x's that falls. 
<laughs> Especially that this uh, here, I take like axes from omega, but it doesn't matter because we can ha take axes from anywhere. Uh, they will be isomorphic. Why? Wh why? Because there is a unique I injection of such an empty, uh, s such a bottom set, uh, such a bottom into any other bottom. So they're all kind of the same. So union type, we can build a union type here. The thing is, I'm, I'm not going to show how it's been built, but basically it's built out, out of products uh, si and singletons. So take uh, those specific pair that ho uh, have only just one thing there. So, so that's uh, how it is. So d first, the joint union is the smallest type where A and B are subtypes. That's a natural definition of disjoint union, right? And it can be built here. So having uh, all the things now, we can build a uh, logic. So first, let's start with conjunction. Given omega cross omega, conjunction is a classifier of pair true and true. Sounds lo logical, right? So given true and true, what, the predicate, what would be the predicate that uh, classifies both? It's a conjunction, right? We can say that uh, so that's the classification. That's how conjunction is defined by just classifying a pair of truths. Disjunction is a little bit trickier, so it's either this or this, so we, we are classifying the union. So if this is true, if the last, uh, left uh, <coughs> pair uh, contains true, good, we have this true. If the right uh, pair contains true, it's good too. So that's like an opportunistic uh, operation, and it classifies this union of omega with omega which is a part of omega cross omega, well, because we have these two things. One is defined on the left side through an identity, and the other one is defined on the right side through the, an identity. So we have conjunction and disjunction, right? And we already had true and false. You can uh, go ahead and check that conjunction is disjunction as associative. They ha we have those uh, distribution laws. And we can also, before we go to negation, Let's define implication. So what does it mean? Implication classifies, implication takes a, p a pair of two logical values, right? And classify them into true if what? If the first pair is weak, uh, if the first component is weaker than the second, right? What is implication of A and B? A A is weaker than B. So what does it mean weaker? We are defining here a subobject, a subtype of omega cross omega consisting of those weaker things. And what is weaker? Meaning that the first projection is the same as conjunction. That is A cross B equals to what? First projection, which is A. So implication, more or less informally, but actually formally, is defined like this. An implication of from A to B is defined as A and B equals to A. This is kind of close to what you see in Boolean logic, except that it's not defined through negation. On the contrary, negation is defined through implication. 
<coughs> negation is defined as a negation of x is when x uh, implies false. So you can easily prove that triple negation is the same as negation, but double negation is not necessarily identity. And we'll show, uh, I'll show you the example. <coughs> we can define quantifiers. So we have enough. The type theory is powerful enough and the logic is powerful enough to define quantifiers. Like universal quantifiers. W uh, what it does, it takes functions from A to omega, that is predicates, right? And it gives us a value in omega. So given a predicate, it tells, is this predicate true on all A? And what it does is it just classifies true. So bottom is the same or is isomorphic to bottom to the power of A. Remember, we had just one uh, function from A to bottom, right? And if we have like, so true to the power of A is a function from bottom to the power of A to omega to the power of A. It's, a, it's an instance of omega to the power of A. And what this instance is, that's kind of, hmm. is it bottom? Should have been top, right? So read, is a uh, read it as top. <laughs> So what is this? Uh, it's equivalent to having a function from a to omega, right? So that's our predicate. And classifying this uh, predicate in omega classifying this, we have a function from this to this. It maps a predicate to, uh, to true only if it's true on every A. On the whole A, not on, yeah, on the whole of A. We can also build a, an existential quantifier, but let's keep it as like a bigger thing. So as a bonus here, the uh, maybe monad. We can build it here. So what's this? What do we see here? Given uh, type X, and subtype x1 and a function from a subtype x1 to y. So this is called partial function from a to y and partial functions are officially denoted, there is a nice standard, uh, officially denoted like this, arrow with cross. I forgot the number of that standard, but that's uh, z notation. <laughs> so, hmm? Good yeah, so z notation is standardized. Actually, they standardized the whole uh, set theory, and I wondered, did they standardize this uh, like intermediate power between uh, continuum and countable or not? I really don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's Europe, so. Okay, so uh, having this partial function, we can, uh, in this type theory, we can extend y to what is known as maybe. And so that, and give a function and having this maybe as the smallest one. In set theory, it's just plus one. So anything that is not mapping, to, uh, is not coming from x1, goes to that additional point, that uh, to nothing, to none. But generally speaking, it may be more sophisticated. So it's, it, it can be built out of omega to the power of x. Now, Let's see uh, how it maps uh, like into our example that uh, we had before. So suppose we have sets and we have two moments of time, like before and after. So two is that, okay, it's called, this category is called set to the power of two. So it's uh, A, yeah, so uh, the types, are defined here as this. Uh, yesterday type A0, today type uh, A1, and a function that maps from 
yesterday to today, which also means that we don't drop anything. So, uh, which was uh, like any any element, any instance that was of type a uh, a zero, is somewhere here. So we're not losing. There's a function. So it's different from like having two distinct and independent uh, sets yesterday and today. So what's a subtype? A subtype is it was subtype yesterday and it's subtype today. And this like these things are compatible. So uh, since we have a function, so the mappings are compatible. So for instance, if we have an instance in yesterday and an instance uh, in today. So the whole instance x, which is, consists of x0 and x1, uh, is given like this. It's an instance of A. Let's see the picture. So in that logic, I <coughs> denote it as this, like this is the yesterday part, this is today part. What's unit, uh, that top? It, it's just one point yesterday and one point today. How many subtypes does this unit have? We have the first subtype itself. The second subtype empty, nothing here, nothing there. But also, th we have this half unit. We had nothing here, but we have something here. An empty set here and uh, a point here. So here's an example of a type that we can call point and a half. So we have this point and half point, just this. So that's what we had yesterday, and that's what we have today. Yesterday, we have two instances. Now we have, no, yesterday we had one instance, today we have two instances. This example shows that points may not be enough to define objects, define types. There's more than just full instances. We can redraw all this, like this picture. So, say, uh, describe things like, this is where our instance always was. This is where uh, will be tomorrow. And this is where will never be. Like again, hash table uh, was subtype of map. Uh, no, not, uh, wasn't, was not a subtype of map, was not implementing map uh, before like Java 1.4. But then later hash table was retrofitted to implement map. So, Cache table is somewhere, uh, no, map is somewhere here. So suppose, uh, like, I showed uh, conjunction and disjunction. Conjunction and disjunction, and of course, give us the opportunity to uh, build intersections and all these things, uh, like, and unions. So suppose we have this, I don't know how readable is this. So we have, like, one subtype here. This is. Like, uh, this is where we always were. This is where we get today. And this is the stuff that never uh, was our, uh, an instance of our subtype. So this is subtype A, and this is subtype B. How do we build an intersection? An intersection is something that consists of uh, these three kind of uh, aspects. This part always belongs to both A and B, right? So this part. This part is the thing that will be eventually there, like it's there today. For, e, on the left, it, it, it was always there, but on the right, it was not there. So we have this. And the same here. And the outside is the thing that never belongs to both. So that's how intersection is being built. And union, it's like it's the opposite. So take these two, and we take a union. So things, uh, instances here, they belong to either that or that, even if they, some of them don't belong to both all the time. Instances here, instances here they belong to either uh, of them, to, to one of them, not either, I'm not saying either, to one of these subtypes today, but not yesterday. And these things never belonged. So see, they were outside. So that's how it, uh, it looks like in this. And also negation. It shows that negation, double negation is not the same as identity. So have this, like this is a subtype, where uh, this is uh, instances here, they always belong. Instances here, 
They belong only today, but not yesterday. And the instances here, they never belonged. So take a negation. Now, these guys here, they belong to negation. These guys here, they belong to, uh, no, these guys here, they don't belong to negation. Uh, no, hmm? And will never belong to negation. Yeah. So take negation again, and we have this. See, we have this Boolean, either true or false. So uh, things that uh, became, uh, 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 things that got our type only today, uh, after double negation, they become ours. And things that are outside, they will never uh, be ours. So that's how it is. D double negation, if you take double negation, it returns as only true or false. So that's it with, with this short introduction. These are the things to read uh, with a lot of like inspiring, Though this is the standard. <laughs> <laughs> Rosetta Stone covered these issues uh, well. It never mentions uh, intuitionistic logic, or maybe it does. But it shows like a very, very close uh, interpretation of this. Th this is a big book that now costs uh, like 18 bucks or 22 bucks, so it, it makes sense to buy and read. And the other things are like kind of inspiring readings. And I believe it's published on, the, on GitHub, so... Uh, no, I mean, wow, there was... Okay. Thank you. Thank you.